Good morning and welcome back. Today is Sunday, the 5th of February, 2023. Hope you're having a good day. Today we're gonna to visit two spots. Uh, if you watch my channel or you can also go back, about a month ago I was in Las Vegas and we went by Liberace's house. Now we're staying, staying we're stopping by Liberace's vacation home in Palm Springs. It was nicknamed Piazza di Liberace. So let's go take a look around. So as you can see, the famous mailbox right in front of us, the little piano. Distinctively sticks out for Liberace. And most of it, the house has been redone on the inside. And as you can see, the Piazza di Li Liberace. But a lot of the statues and things around the house are all original, including the little fountain. This would be the front entrance. And this is located at 1441 Kawea Drive. And without going too close, I'll zoom in. When nobody was living here, I was able to see the picture behind the gate is actually of Liberace. And there's a little bench right there. So, this would be the backyard and we'll walk around and see if anything's visible. But this was his vacation home. The next home we're going to stop by was another residence that he owned. The trees even got beads in it. Fancy. I don't want to bother the current owners, but here's a statue in the backyard. Or part of the backyard. I'll also include a clip from YouTube of an overview. And it was said that Liberace at this house would play piano well into the night. And then in the morning, go out by the pool and eat cold fried chicken. So if you ever want to look it up, it's on the corner of Camino Norte and Coahuila, North Coahuila. These palm trees are so tall. They've probably been here for years, undoubtedly. But yes, this was Liberace's home away from home in Las Vegas that he would come out to spend some time when he came to the desert. Now let's head over to the other house that he bought, the more infamous house. I gotta figure that this light was original. I can just imagine seeing Lee come out the front door. If you've never seen Behind the Candelabra on HBO, I highly recommend it. Here we are now at Liberace's other house. Liberace purchased this house, and this was actually a former bed and breakfast. He redesigned uh, the whole inside and actually had themed room here. Themed rooms here. This was the house that was known for uh, some of his infamous parties and would also entertain guests as Elvis and Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. But yeah, here's that house. The new uh, people have now added the walls around, as I said, but I think we can still get a pretty good look at it once I cross the street, once these bikers get out of my way. So let's go take a look. There's the call box. And I'll actually add a clip to this as well. So you can see above it and a little bit more behind the wall that's going on. Kind of hard to see through this, so let's go to the front. So you can't see that much, but it's nestled up right to the San Jacinto Mountains and right below the O'Donnell House. This is where Liberace actually passed away from AIDS. I think it was like 1985 or 1989 sometime in the 80s so here's Liberace's house and the drone footage uh, as I said earlier that I was going to include this way you can see it just a little bit better and get a bird's eye view of just how huge this compound was once again there's the, the Liberace piano at the front and Liberace was quite an entertainer as we all know Amazing statues in front and the gate. When we were there, obviously, there's a car. I have still yet to see water in that fountain, but yeah, that is the whole compound that has been redone. There's the pool that people said that the Barashi would hang around and eat cold fried chicken. It just gives a little better uh, juxtaposition. And also, I'll include, this is the other house that was so heavily, uh, what is it? 
there was just so much uh, brush and palm trees that we couldn't see in, but this uh, drone footage gives you a better look at the house too. And this was the one that was the bed and breakfast and also the house that Liberace passed away in. I did not take this footage, but thank you to whoever did. So as you can see, he can't really see all that much either. And that's the very front of it. That's right by Palm Canyon Drive. And that's the Barachi's house. The man, the myth, Lee. You could just imagine seeing Liberace walking around there. And uh, they also said that the gate was never there. So it was just all open and made it to the corner of uh, Chino Avenue and Potencho. I, I believe that's how it's pronounced. But at the end of this, if you're ever looking and you're into mid-century modernism week, at the bottom of this mountain, follow the trail of these palm trees coming directly down. And if you know anything about architecture, Albert Frey is buried right at the bottom here. And I'd have to say that Palm Springs would not look the way it does because of this man, if this man never came out here. But he also has his famed rock house up in the hills over here, around the corner. You can always see it when looking straight up from the Kimpton Hotel. Um, there's one more house I want to show you before we get going. 71 degrees. A bird in the background. Beautiful day. The three palm trees right in the center. I decided to take a quick stroll just around the cemetery just because it looked kind of interesting. You can hear people off in the distance over there. That's the O'Donnell Golf Course. Mr. O'Donnell actually had people during the Depression days for work build that thing in the mountain, as you can see. And they were actually all stones that were all hand laid and brought up there. I think he paid him two fifty a day to start stacking that. And what he wanted to do, you can see a trail out over here too. And Mr. O'Donnell's plan was that after he passed, he wanted to be buried up there in the rocks. But in California, that is a no-go. There's a couple tombstones that I want to show you that are kind of interesting, a little bit different, like this one. This is Cecil. It's an angle, a private, 137 Infantry 35 Division, World War II, 1891, 1946. And there's another one that I wanted to show you too that I thought was, well, I've never seen it before. Maybe just in California, but on the East Coast, these might be more popular. Look at this, Marin, Mary Helen Stein Thompson, made out of rocks and directly in front of her, One made out of bricks and wood. This is for husband and father Clarence Clark Neal, 1887 to 1949. Never seen anything like that. New to me. Upon walking back to the car, I saw my shadow. That's not what I want to show you. I saw this rock. I was like, that's an odd place for a rock if you look around. No rocks anywhere. But as you get closer, on top of this rock, Cliff Fraser. I can't see any dates, but yeah. That's for old Cliff right there. Pretty interesting little cemetery. I could spend some more time here, and I think I will next time I head back. So we're still on uh, Chino Road, and this is 444 Chino Road. And I've always seen this house, and I thought I knew what house it was, and I was correct. This house right here that we're walking up to, this belonged to Sammy Davis Jr. Frank's house isn't too far away either. And actually, everyone around here, Dean Martin's just right down the road too. So this was Sammy Davis Jr.'s home. Well, that's going to do it for today, I think. Uh, if you're new here, thanks for watching. 
please consider subscribing. It was just a little trip around Palm Springs, Liberace House, Sammy Davis Jr. House, Albert Frey Cemetery. Uh, once again, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. All right, a little bonus footage. So this house I've been to many, many, many times, and it sat in shambles. This actually was Dean Martin's house. And this is about, doesn't look like they're doing much, but they did put a fence up. Hopefully somebody bought it and they are restoring it. Um, this house is about half a mile from Sammy's, right by the Elvis Honeymoon house, right down this street. You can easily look up his address. And it said that while Dean was here, he would usually be out golfing. And when he wasn't golfing, he would uh, be inside this residence drinking scotch and watching westerns. It's also been said that Dean's granddaughters would set up a lemonade stand right here in the front with hopes that passerbys, hoping to catch a glimpse of Dean, would actually buy some lemonade. I really hope this house gets restored. It's always looked like this though. One last shot. Thanks again.